proprietary rights. It is the signature of our age that no one without exception can now determine his own life within even a moderately comprehensible framework, as was possible earlier in the assessment of market relationships. In principle, everyone, however powerful, is an object. Even the profession of general no longer offers adequate protection. No agreements in the fascist era are binding enough to secure headquarters against air attacks. And commandants, commandants observing traditional caution are hanged by Hitler and beheaded by Chiang Kai-shek. It follows directly from this that anyone who attempts to come out alive and survival itself has something nonsensical about it, like dreams in which, having experienced the end of the world, one afterwards crawls from a, from a basement, ought also to be prepared at each moment to end his life. This is the mournful truth that has emerged from Zarathustra's exuberant doctrine of freely chosen death. Freedom has contracted to pure negativity, and what in the days of Art Nouveau was known as a beautiful death has shrunk to the wish to curtail the infinite abasement of living and the infinite torment of dying in a world where there are far worse things to fear than death. The objective end of humanism is only another expression for the same thing. It signifies that the individual as individual in representing the species of man has lost the autonomy through which he might realize the species.